Hi guys, Avi here. Today we're going to be creating a very cool click counter application. And basically I just want to show you how you can create a very simple app for the Apple Watch. If this is your first time dealing with the Apple Watch, that's fantastic. Um, click counter, some of these basic applications are the best way to get started before you actually understand all the concepts that deal with the Apple Watch. So let's get started. Um, first thing first, you should have downloaded Xcode by now and you should have either version 6.2 6.3 or anything 6.2 and above. So create a new Xcode project and maybe you've had some past experiences with iPhone. If you have, that's fantastic. If you haven't and this is your first time actually coding with Swift, then I definitely recommend you actually find out how Swift works. How do you write code in Swift before you follow along this tutorial? If you've had experience with Swift before, if you had experience with iPhone, then you're in the right place. So iOS application, single view application, hit next. And it's gonna ask for a product name, so I'm gonna call this Click Counter YouTube because I'm creating this video for YouTube. And everything else should look the same. Organization identifier is basically asking if you have a company, then it's the reverse of your company domain, so com dot whatever your company name is, language, devices, and organization name. So hit next. And now it's going to create or actually ask us where do you want to save the project. So just create some random Apple Watch projects and save it over there. That's what I've done. And I'm just going to position my screen. One sec. I'm going to position my screen as soon as um, this loads. Looks like it's a bit slow. All right. So let me just make this a bit better. All right, so now that we've got our Xcode to show up, I want you, you see this plus at the bottom, if you don't see it, um, press on this doorway thing, and once you do it, or even here, if you don't even press the doorway thing, you can select this click counter YouTube and add a target. And once you add a target, it asks you, hey, what kind of target do you wanna add? So in iOS, we're gonna choose Apple Watch and then Watch Kit App, hit next. And it's now gonna ask his product name, blah, blah, blah. Do not include notification scene or glancing. We don't have to do anything with them right now. They're just there. Um, maybe in a later lecture, I'll cover those, but not right now. Hit finish. So as soon as you add your target, you're now going to notice that we have our WatchKit extension file and we have our WatchKit app folder. So again, the interface of storyboard will have your whole Apple Watch design. So while we're creating this click counter application, all the design will be going in this small black box and the code for the Apple Watch will be going into the interface controller dot Swift. All right, so let's get started. Um, first thing first with the clean counter app, it's going to be a very simple app. Uh, we're going to be using buttons and labels. So go ahead, search for a button and drag and drop a button onto the screen. And I'm going to select the click counter app, not the button, but the background. And I'm going to change the color to something maybe like a nice blue. I always like it when we use some color because it makes the app just look better. Now I'm going to make my button maybe black and I'm going to say vertical center. So again, with storyboards and stuff, it's not, if you have had experience with iPhone, you know that there's constraints, right? With the Apple Watch, however, there's no such concept as constraints. You have center, you have left and you have right and you have the concept of groups. What groups allow you to do is group actually group allows you to put two or more items right next to each other but we won't be discussing them right now all we want is our button so I'm gonna make my button a little more squarish and I'm gonna say horizontal center okay now this button let's actually do vertical bottom and change the title of the button to click click me okay so click me, this is our button, and now all we want is a label. So let's go ahead and search for a label. Go ahead, drag and drop that onto the screen. Horizontal center, vertical top. Let's increase the size a bit so that it's nice and big for our numbers. Let's center the text of the label, and then let's go ahead and change the text color to black, okay? So I'm gonna change the text again to zero, and I'm gonna increase the size of the text. So going to font body, you see this T sign, press on it, font, change it to system. And let's go ahead and increase the size to maybe something around 40-ish. 40 is good. 
So yeah, this is gonna be our basic outline of the click counter app, a simple button and a label. Now, if you're wondering maybe how did I change the background stuff, just go back a few minutes. It's not, it's nothing too complex. I mean, setting up all the design stuff, it's actually quite easy. Now, when you're programming with the Apple Watch, if this is your first time, then the way this works is you have to add IB outlets and IB actions. So think of it like this. We have this button and we have this label. The core concept of this app is once we press on this button, we want our label to update. So what I want you to do is if you look on your whole Xcode interface, you're going to notice these three buttons on the top right of your screen. One is the standard editor, second is the assistant editor, and third is the version editor. Standard shows you one view, assistant on the other hand shows you your um it shows you your um interface on storyboard and it shows you your code on the right hand side. So it's actually quite neat. Um let me minimize this. There we go. So this is our click counter app and this is our code. So the way this works is we want a function. We want a function to be executed every time this button is pressed. And that's where IB actions and IB outlets come in. IB actions are used when you press a button or when buttons are pressed or maybe a slit, uh, uh, what would you call it? A slider is pressed, something along those lines. When there's an action, when there's an interaction happening on your Apple watch, you're going to use an IB action. However, such as, suppose you want to change the background color of your button. Suppose you want to change the text of a label. When you're not doing something interactive and instead you want something to change, that's when you use IB outlets. Now, if you're wondering how do we create them, it's actually quite simple. Select this click me button, control drag onto your code and say action. Connection as action. And let's give our name as click button. Okay. So this function click button will now be called every single time we press on the button. If you don't believe me, let's go ahead and call of maybe a print line statement, which says print click has been pressed. All right. So I'm going to run this build and let's take a look at what's happening. Again, this function will always be called whenever the button is pressed. And in this, we can create maybe a variable called counter and and in this, maybe you can create a variable called counter and increase it by one every single time the button is pressed. That's the core functionality of this app, right? So it looks like our build has succeeded. Let's wait for our iOS simulator to show up. Okay, here is our Apple Watch. If you don't see this Apple Watch right now, go to um, hardware. Um, Okay, it looks like it's loading. Hardware, external displays, Apple Watch. All right. So right now, if you don't see this Apple Watch, hardware, external displays, Apple Watch 38 mm or Apple Watch 42 mm. All right. So this is our Apple Watch. Let's take a look at what's happening. Um, right now, there's a blank screen. So many times, if you ever get this blank screen, just go ahead, stop the build. Um, and once it's been canceled, you will see it over here. Canceled. Click counter YouTube. Then what you can do is run it again and it goes two to three times faster. All right. So we now have this click me function. Let's go ahead and press it. Press it. What's happening? Okay. It looks like it's loading, but for you, uh, it should have worked and down below in your console. So your console is going to be this bottom black over here, this black box in the console. You should have seen click has been pressed. My Apple watch simulator is just a bit slow. So don't worry. Now that we've understood how this function is going to get called, let's actually think about how the code should look like. So we're creating this counter click or click counter application. And the way I see it is every time the click me button is pressed, we want to increase a variable by one and then set the label as that variable's value. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a variable called counter, set that equal to zero. And then once that's done, Every time click button is pressed, I'm going to increase the counter by one counter plus plus or counter is equal to counter plus one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the labels text. So before that, let's go ahead and drag an IB outlet. So it's an outlet and I'm going to call this as counter label. Again, you can call it whatever you want. Doesn't really matter. So counter plus plus, And then we're going to say counter label dot set text set text and what's our text going to be? Well, if you've already learned how to write integers in strings, it's going to be a backslash and then in two 
normal brackets, it's going to be the variable counter. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Let's go ahead and run it. And now this should be a very simple click counter application. All right, so build succeeded. It should be showing up in the next few seconds. There we go. And what do we get? It's loading. It's loading. Again, sometimes it might take you a long time for it to load. And if it does, stop the build and run it again because that's usually what works. Um, but yeah. So again, in this case, it's taking too long. So just stop it and run it again. It saves you some time, actually. So it looks like it already succeeded. That was fast. Okay, there we go. So we have a click me button and a label. Let's press it. Fantastic. So this is a very basic, very basic click counter application. Did you see how little code we wrote? We wrote what? Max three lines of code. The IB outlet and IB action stuff don't count. So yeah, fantastic job. I mean, this is a very cool click counter application. Again, you could have added some features, maybe like a restart button. So you could have maybe a restart button at the top, which says if you press this, then our counter goes back to zero, stuff like that. All right. Thank you so much for listening to this lecture. Again, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And I'll see you in the next video.